Hey guys, today we'll be filling our loot chest with gold and items from our spreadsheets that we have imported into Godot in the last episode. Now before we start, we always quickly go over the changes and the assets that I have added to our tutorial to make sure that you can follow along. Before you, you can see that now I have a loot panel. I've decided not to build the loot panel on camera because it takes another episode and I didn't want to bore you since we already made a graphical user interface for our inventory two episodes ago. And I've used pretty much the same assets as I did with our inventory system. So that can be recycled and the setup is pretty similar as well. I'll quickly go over it and then we're going to go into the other settings that I've added or the other assets. Now right here we have the same setup that we have a loop panel with a border which is the same double edge, the background, the paper background and our main notes which consist of a scroll box, our loop slots and our buttons down here. In the middle there is a margin for the buttons, I have a loot all button and a close button with a similar setup with a texture behind the button and a label uh, on top of it. For our scroll box, we basically have the same setup as our inventory slots, where we have six slots in total this time, and each slot consists of a background icon, a button which will have the item icon once it's filled, a label on top of uh, the button for a possible quantity if the quantity is bigger than, than one for stackable items and of course a label that will contain the name of the item so this this inventory or this loot panel slot is identical to our inventory slots that we made two episodes ago for our inventory so if you want to follow along with the tutorial you can recreate this whole loot panel based um, on these values here. So if you want you can pause the video, you can see the notes that I've right, I have right here and using the instructions from video 1, part 1 from this inventory system series, you should be able to recreate this. Furthermore, I have made some minor adjustments to our loot table. In our loot table I have added two columns item count minimum and item count maximum. This will be the minimum amount and the maximum amount of items that can spawn within our loot chest. And then to finish it off, I have downloaded a RPG icon pack consisting of 700 different icons. This is a free open source art that you can use under a open source license that um, is available in the link down below in the description. I've added the link where you can download this. Make sure you read the description to make sure how to use the open license. Um, you do need to reference it, uh, but then you're free to use these icons in any commercial projects that you have. Uh, credits don't go to me, but go to the creator. So please thank him on uh, the forum post that's linked uh, if you want to show him gratitude for releasing this uh, this icon set. Uh, of this icon set, I've used two icons, one for a sword and one for uh, a pair of boots uh, that I'll be using in this tutorial to add to the chest. With that set up, we can start adding the code. So first, start by selecting your loop panel and adding a script to it. I'm going to use an empty script because I think it's a lot easier and I'll be adding the code here piece by piece and going over it with, with you. I think this will make this tutorial considerably faster and just pause the video whenever you want so that you can follow along or if you're writing the code or copying the code yourself, you can do it at the same time. First, let's go over the variables that I need within the scene. So I have a variable called map name with the map name, I'm going to be referencing our loot table, which line it should take. So in the future, this map name will come from another scene, which will carry a variable uh, that's currently loaded. And the loot count will be the amount of items that will be within the chest. So that will be based on those minimum and maximum uh, loot counters that I've added in our JSON file. And the loot dictionary is going to be the end product. This is basically going to be a dictionary with the specific loot items and the specific quantities of loot um, that our code is going to generate. With our variables defined, we can start with the first piece of code, which is going to be our ready function. In the ready function, we're first defining the map name for to reference our loot table. 
For now, we're going to go with grasslands number one, hard coded in the code. But as I said before, in the future, we want this to be dependable on an external variable, external from this scene, based on the map that the player actually starts. Then I'm splitting up my code into three different functions. Splitting up your code is quite handy to keep a good overview of the whole code that you have written. It's much easier once you're looking back at your code several weeks or months later to figure out and retrace your steps on what you actually did in the past. And when you have to hunt any box, this makes it so much quicker to narrow it down to just a few lines of code instead of a, a very big piece of code. Um, so we're going to be using a determine loot count function to determine how many items will spawn within our chest. We're going to be using a loot selector function um, to determine which loot based on the possible uh, the different possibilities defined in our loot table and based on the chance defined in our loot table and based on the possible quantities within our loot table we're going to be defining what is actually um, in the chest and we'll save that to our loot dictionary variable which will be basically the end product of this piece of code but then of course we also have to show what's in the chest for the player so based on that end result we're going to be populating the window um, with the actual loot so that the player can see it and that we can start coding the interactions in the future episode that will be out this upcoming Friday. Now let's go over the next function which is the determine loot count function. Now this is where we're going to start using the data we have imported through JSON from our spreadsheet in the last episode. If you haven't watched that episode yet I strongly advise you to watch that episode if you don't know how to import JSON files into Godot. If you do, then you can continue watching, I guess. So what we're doing is we're referencing the script that we have made in the last episode, our import data script. And within our import data script, we have two variables, loot data and item data. We are referencing that variable right here with loot data, and we're asking it to search for a key within the dictionary. That's going to be our map name, which is grasslands number one. And then within that key, we ask it to find the item count minimum. So what is actually doing, if we have a look at our spreadsheet, um, we want grasslands number one, this value. It's handy to understand how this works because then you know how to reference your JSON dictionaries that you've imported correctly. Um, so what happens is that when we export this file and create the JSON, it creates a JSON file where it copies the value within the first column and creates that as a key. As you see, it's duplicated here, both as a key and as a variable within that key. And within that key, it has all the variables that is on our horizontal line, our row within our spreadsheet. So what we're asking it is we go to the item data uh, script go to the variable uh, loot loot uh, table within that loot table is a dictionary which is this json and then find our map key which is grasslands number one and find the item count minimum which is one that's how we're going to get our values um, out of that dictionary now with our item count min and maximum set we can randomize um, the numbers to get a random amount of loot in our loot chest. For that we're using the randy command and the randy command works uh, a little bit complicated sometimes. So let's go over that and let's see how we can exactly use it within this example. Basically the randy command only takes one value. That's important. You cannot say take a random value between 4 and 10. You can only say take this number and randomize it between zero and that particular number minus one. The minus one, as you see, for example, uh, in this example or these two examples, um, it's very handy when you're working with arrays, as arrays start with key number zero, um, but it wor doesn't work quite well when you're working with variables like we're using now, with variables that carry integers with them. But you can just simply add plus one to make sure you get a number between one and, and 100. So we'll be using that. However, the thing is, when you have a uh, map boss or a legendary chest or a magic chest, epic chest, you name it, you might not want to reward the player 
for that achievement with just one item. You might want to reward the player with four items or five out items minimum, up to maybe a total of 10 or 20 or however much you desire. To do that, we have to create this particular function. What we do is that we subtract the item count minimum from the item count maximum. We add plus one to it to compensate for the fact that we compensate for the minus one within the randy command as it would be expecting an array and then we're going to be adding the item count minimum to that so with three and one that might not look that much clear so let's go with four and six so what what would happen here is that the item count max min minus the item count min would create two plus one is three that means that the randy command is going to um, get you a random value between 0 and 2 and then we add the integer item count minimum and that will be 0 plus 4 is 4 or 2 plus 4 is 6 and thereby giving us the range that we're looking for so yeah that's how you can use the randy counter or the randy command um, with two integers and still get the value that you desire now the randy command uses a uh, a seed, you could say, uh, a random number that is remembered by Godot. So that seed needs to be randomized to make sure that the randy command gives you different outcomes every single time that you run it within a certain game scene. To do that, we first add the randomized command to randomize the seed, which the randy command then uses to determine what the outcome of this uh, line of code will be. And as a, a final touch, I've added the print loot count. To make sure you have coded it correctly, just um, use this command, run the game a couple of times to make sure that um, the loot count is between the values that you desire for your game. Now for our next piece of code, our loot selector. This is starting to get a little bit more complex, uh, but bear with me. Pause the video whenever you need to look through the code uh, take it all in, uh, read up uh, on any sort of commands or functions uh, that you that you uh, don't know yet. What we're doing is first we're creating a loop and that loop, that loop is going to continue for the range between 1 and the total loop count plus 1. Now the plus 1 comes again from this range command. Basically this is the example or the case scenario that we have between 2 and 5. For us it's between maybe 1 and 3. Uh, you see it only prints between 2 and 4. So it, again, it's minus 1. It's a characteristic of this command, and to compensate for that, we add plus 1 to the loop count. Then we use the randomize command again to randomize the seed, and we define a variable loot selector, and we randomize a number between 1 and 100 with the same randy functions that we've used in the previous function, or the same randy command that we used in the previous function. Now we have a value between 1 and 100 and we define a counter. We need this to run through the loops and we set that within this loop uh, we define another loop that while the loop selector is bigger than 0 um, we want to, def to verify if that loop selector is smaller than the import data, loop data, map name, item uh, string counter chance. Now that's a lot to take in. What we're doing here with the import loot data map name, this is the same import data loot data import data loot data map name that we've used here to define our item count minimum and maximum. And we're adding between brackets instead of upon, uh, a dot because we have a variable within here. We ask it to compare it to the item counter chance. So when our counter is one this will be item one chance and that is the variable that is within our column here item one chance so we're comparing it to this number 60. Now if that number is smaller it means that the number we have had falls within the first 60 numbers which is item number one so we loot item number one. So if that is true it's going to add that item number one to our loop dictionary that we have defined on the top here. That's going to be our end result um, of this of this um, 
piece of uh, piece of code, the, the loop selector function. How it does that is that it's first creating a new variable, which is going to be an array called loot. And by the, using the function append, which means add to, uh, we're going to adding the item name of that particular um, uh, item that we looted. And again, we find this within our JSON file data. Then we're going to randomize it as well. And we're going to um, append on top of that name in the same array we're going to be appending the item quantity. So we're taking, uh, uh, we're using, let's start at the beginning, we're using the rand range function for that, which only takes float numbers. So we have to um, transform our integers that are in our dictionaries first to floats. Then we're using our import data, loop data, map name, item, and then the counter again, minimum quantity and maximum quantity. Now these counters are numbers uh, and we're we're put, turning those into strings. You see me do that in several cases as these counters are saved as integers within a dictionary but in order to add them together with item and minimum quantity we need to make them strings. So it takes two floats. After, um, we So we take the integers from our JSON, we turn them into floats, we, turn, we put these two floats in our random range number that gives us a float, for example, 1.11122345, several dec decimals long, and then we turn that by adding integer all the way at the beginning, we turn that again into an integer, rounding it to the closest value, um, 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 for, uh, yeah, rounding it down to the closest value. Then with our loot dictionary, this is our end result, we're going to add a key to this dictionary. That key is going to be the current size of the loot dictionary, which currently is zero if it's this first item, plus one. So we give it the key number one. If it already had run twice over this piece of code and it's working on the third item, in case we are having three items in our loot chest, the current loot size would be one, or the current loot dictionary would have two keys already. It would add one, it would key, add key number three. And it's defined and it's going to add the loot array that we have filled here to that key. And once it has made a number, once it has done a full round is going to break out of this while loop. If our loot selector is not smaller than the loot chance, we're going to subtract from this loot selector the item loot chance from that same JSON. So imagine the loot selector was 80, it compares it to the first number uh, item chance uh, or item 1 chance which is a value of 60. It subtracts it here, remaining 20. We are adding 1 to the counter and then it's again verifying if that loot selector which is now not 80 but 20 is equal or, or smaller or equal to the item counter which is now plus 1 down here number two chance. So now it's selecting item number two which has a chance of 25% 20 is indeed smaller than 25 and now we're adding item number two to our loop list constantly using this counter on several occasions within this function to make sure we're selecting the right item that uh, we want to loot. Now when it's done looping over um, these two nested uh, loops we'll have either between uh, either one two or three loot items within our loot dictionary and we are ready to print this loot dictionary again for error handling. You can see whether the function works appropriately and then we can continue to our last function. Now our last function um, is our populate panel function. Um, this has uh, a little bit of the same and a little bit new. First we define a counter again. I'm very often working with counters as they work quite easy. And a counter is the size of the loop dictionary. So if the end result of 
the loot selector function was one item, this counter is going to be one. If it was three items, this counter is going to be three. Um, I verify the, uh, the print counter to make sure that we have this, the same value. This is a, a error handling uh, method. Then we're going to loop over the nodes in the loot panel slots. Now we have not made any node groups yet, so let's start by doing that. In our loot panel, if you select one of the panel slots, you can go in here when you have the inspector, you can go to node, you can go to groups, and you can add a group. And I'm going to add the group loot panel slots. Now once you've added it, you can manage groups, you can select the loot panel slot, and you can see it has already added the node that I've had selected within the node overview here, but we're going to be adding our other loot slots as well. You can select with control, add them all in, now they're all there. I'm, and for the, the reference, I am adding the horizontal box containers, the H box containers that contain the um, texture rectangle icon, the texture button uh, that will carry our icon of our item, and the label and the or the label for the quantity and the label for the name. Uh, that 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 little piece. That's what I'm adding as a, a group. Now with those groups set, and you can see the item group um, or the grouping has an icon right here, so you can verify if all of them actually are within the group, and it looks like they are. We're going to be um, iterating over each and every single one of those loot panel slots and filling them based on whether they need to be filled or not. So we have a counter here. Um, that, counter, that counter was the counter for the amount of loot that's going to spawn within our chest. If that counter has not reached zero yet, and we turn that counter slowly down when we iterate over this loop one by one, um, it should not run this code. It's still going to iterate over our loot panel slots, but it's basically going to iterate over our loot panel slots and carry out no code, and it's only six slots in total, so this takes basically no resources for um, um, the device to do so we can leave that as it is if it is actually not zero yet so if we still need to add an item we're going to get the node um, we're going to get a node out of this uh, node list that node is going to be the string of i so we're turning i, which is a node reference, into a node path. And we're going to add label to it. So we're basically building a node path. The node path we're building is the node path of this label. If I would copy this node path and I would put it down here, then this piece of code right here that I've selected is going to be creating this line and is going and with the get node command is going to be calling this particular node that is behind this particular line however by using this piece of code it's variable that way we can iterate through it and we don't need long pieces of code so the the uh, loop panel slot is the horizontal box so the horizontal box is up to here and this is going to be loot one loot two three four five six and we're adding with the plus command we're adding the piece label so we're adding this final piece and you can see me doing that several times and i'm adding the variable parts that we need uh, to change within our code to make sure that the player sees what we want them to see once we have that once we've fetched that note with the get note function we set the text of that node equal to loot dictionary, the loot dictionary that we have built up in our previous function. We um, the key from the for that dictionary is the current counter, and that current counter is counting down from three to two to one to zero if you have three items. And as you can remember here, we have used also a 
integer as our dictionary keys. So we're using a dictionary, uh, an integer for dictionary keys here. We can very easily with another counter iterate through the, that dictionary in the next piece of code. Now in that, uh, on that counter is of course going to find the array loot that we have put in that dictionary and an array starts with uh, key 0 to uh, uh, unlimited. So under uh, the name was saved as first, was first appended, so that is under key number 0 and the um, quantity is secondly appended, so that will be under key number 1. So we set the, this label, which is the label that is supposed to show the name of the item, we set that equal to the name that we found here in our JSON. Next, we are defining an icon. That icon is always saved in our art folder and we add the string of the loot dictionary counter zero plus PNG. I have renamed all my art that I use for, for example, steel sword and steel boots uh, and gold. Uh, I have renamed those um, foul names to be exactly identical to the actual item name. Thereby I can simply reference the item name within this function, add PNG in the end, and suddenly I'm referencing a image. Now I'm going to get the node very similar to this piece of code, but this time I'm getting the loot icon loop button. That's the um, where the icon of the item should go and I set the normal texture and I load the icon. The load command over here makes sure that the resource within the uh, resource folder is loaded prior to adding it. If you don't add load, it will not work as you would desire. Then finally, we're going to add the quantity to the label on top of the button, but we only do that if the loot dictionary count of one, so one stands for the quantity within the loot array that is saved within our loop dictionary. If that is bigger than one, we want it to show. If it's not bigger than one, we don't want it to show. We're getting the particular label under the loop button, so not the label under the hbox container, but the label under the loop button, loop icon, and we set that text to be equal to the quantity. Then we are subtracting one from our counter and the loop starts again, that way looping through all the items that we have added and basically building up the uh, loot panel with uh, resources, with assets and icons and names and numbers based on the loot dictionary that we have defined uh, up here in our second function. With that all set, we can run the simulator <coughs> for this particular scene <coughs> and in this case I have looted three times gold with a 60% chance, it's quite likely. You see that the numbers for the quantities are different now and I can simply rerun this several times. Now again we have three gold, different values again. This time we have one item of gold, one pile of gold. This time we get two swords. This time we get a piece of gold, uh, a pile of gold and steel boots and it just keeps on randomizing this number and we're getting stuff in our loot box. That was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I can imagine you have quite some questions as that was quite a lot of code to take in for one single episode. If you got any question, ask them down in the comments below or find me on Twitch. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday in the evening, European time, American times are, are down below. Um, if you like this video, smash that like button, hit subscribe if you don't want to miss the next episode and don't forget that little bell icon so the next video can pop up in your mailbox on next Friday. Uh, in the next video we'll be uh, adding a loot chest to an actual game scene. I'll be pre-making a, a player control uh, to run around in, 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 in the game scene. Uh, I'll be adding the chest uh, together with you guys and I'll probably even include a randomizer that if you want to recycle maps that the chests don't spawn every time in the same location and you could probably recycle that piece of code to do the same with the monsters you want to add to your game. And we're going to be adding functionalities to the loot all and the close button of the actual loot panel thereby putting the items in our inventory. Uh, that's probably going to be enough for the next episode and yeah the series will continue after that 
with more functionalities to the inventory system itself. I'll see you then.